So good morning everyone, it is early morning Friday here in Texas and today I am going to do a what sold on eBay video. And for you guys that haven't seen these videos before, I'm going to go straight down my eBay page and I'm going to show you exactly what sold. If I get to a point where there are a bunch of items that are kind of boring or they're just parts that have sold over and over from our storage locker, I'll skip over those and try to do some of the more interesting ones. And for you guys that don't know are new to our channel, I just wanted to give you an idea of how we source our items. So we go to garage sales, we go to thrift stores, uh, which could be Goodwill or other thrift stores, and we do storage lockers and we go to estate sales. So storage lockers are kind of far and few between. We're really choosy on those, so we want to get um, good ones. We don't we want to make sure that when we get these, it is, we know it has items in it. So we're, we're really particular on those. And estate sales, whenever they pop up, we go to them. So some of these items may come from estate sales that you're going to see. A lot of them come from Goodwills. Um, garage sales aren't going on right now. So Goodwill right now has been our main source of sourcing items. And um, I don't like that. I don't like to get all my stuff from Goodwill because you pay a little bit more there than you would at a garage sale or an estate sale. That's just, that's just how it is. But um, we're fortunate that we live in a college town, so we have an abundance of items at our, at our uh, Goodwills. It's, it's crazy how often I can go in there daily and just stock up on items. Uh, I go every day during my lunch break and there's nothing for me to come home every day with like five to eight items. And uh, so that really keeps us going. But I did, uh, I told you guys I was gonna learn how to record screens, so I learned how to do that. And I'm gonna switch over to our eBay page and I'm just gonna start uh, talking about what we sold. And I'll kind of go over some numbers on how much we've sold so far this year and just how we're doing. But let's get started, we'll switch over right now. So I'm just going to hop right in here with our performance and sales tabs. So this report is from January 18th to February 17th. So this is about a month. And our total sales so far was 7,125 and selling costs was 1,900 and our net sales 4,700. Quantity sold so far was 130 and our average sale price is $54.81. And the reason that our average sale price per item is so high right now is because of the storage locker that we uh, got all the appliance parts from. Each one of those parts is selling for $50 to $100, so that's really jumped that up. But I'm gonna switch over to the um, paid and ship tab, and we're gonna start going over exactly what um, we found here lately. And as we go along, I'll, I'll talk about the brands and give you uh, tips and some uh, ideas on what to pick up and what not to pick up. So this first item is a Free People shirt. We paid, uh, or we got 22 for this. Generally, we pay around six or seven dollars at like Goodwill for a shirt like this. And you know, 22 dollars for this shirt's not bad. Free People has not dropped off per se. It's still a good brand to pick up, but it's just not commanding very high prices unless it's a unique item. So just be careful uh, when you pick up free people and realize that if you're getting it for six or seven bucks, you're probably gonna only make 20 uh, on a shirt, maybe 30 if it's really good. If you can get these at garage sales for a dollar, by all means, all day long, buy free people, it's gonna sell. Okay, so this next item is one I definitely wanna talk about. This item only sold for 10 bucks, and it is a pair of Ugg sandals. Man, Ugg is one of those brands that, like, it's, it's very finicky. Um, it's got to be in excellent condition. Uh, it's got to be what's, what's popular now, and this pair of sandals just did not hit the mark. We listed these for 30, and these were listed all the way back in 2021. So when this item come back up that I could give offers... I sent out an offer for 10 bucks just to get this out of inventory. And sometimes, you know, we don't always make the best purchases and that's what you gotta do. Just 
sit down on an offer, get rid of inventory. You just want to keep things rolling. Get your money back on at least what you paid for the item, especially on an item like this. So UGG, not a bad brand, just not always the greatest. This one was kind of unique. This was a Walker Texas Ranger shirt, and we got $28 for this, and this was a cast shirt. So Chuck Norris lives about 30 minutes away from us at a, at a large farm uh, in around Navasota, Texas area. I found this at Goodwill, probably paid six bucks for it and got 28. And you know, that's pretty awesome. Can't ask for much more than that out of a t-shirt and there's the cast and crew logo that's on it. And it wasn't a, wasn't a great shirt. It was kind of just a, a run on the mill shirt, but it was a, a little bit unique because it was cast and crew. But keep your eyes open for um, for shirts like this, t-shirts that are you know advertisement shirts for different different shows and stuff like that can do well. So that was a cool pickup. All right, so we have one part here that sold for twenty two. I'm gonna skip over that one. That's just kind of your run of the mill part. And this is a, this is a pretty interesting uh, part. So. I think this one sold for 50. We have four available still. We've sold two already. And this was a, a timer for a dryer. And like I said, every one of these parts is selling for about 50 to $100. And we have probably, I say a couple hundred listed right now. And there's probably another hundred more in the storage locker that's gotta be listed. So every time we sell one of these, you know, it, it's money. And that's, that's pretty much it. That's what this was. Appliance parts always do well, especially if they're new in the box. If you can get electronics and appliance parts new in the box, by all means, pick them up. This one was another, another one of those items we found out of the storage locker. Another great one. GE uh, laundry control board sold for 50. And Wolverine... This is a good one to talk about. This one sold for 40 bucks. This was an excellent pickup. I probably paid $10 for these. At Goodwill, we don't pay more than $10 for a pair of shoes. I just don't like doing it. Um, I will pay upwards of 15 and 20 for a nice pair of boots, especially if they're like Red Wing or something that's gonna be like $100, then I'll, I'll pay up for them. But these are those boots and they were in like new condition. I mean, these things were excellent. And I think I have these listed for a couple of weeks. And you can see the bottom of the tread here is in perfect condition. And I, I didn't clean these up a whole lot. I, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time on my shoes. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> so I try to buy shoes that don't need a whole lot of work. But if they are a very unique pair of shoes, like a pair of Jordans that need some uh, extensive cleanup and I'm going to get 100 bucks for it, I don't mind doing it. But generally, I like to pick shoes up like this that are already clean and ready to list. All right, so let's talk about hats. You guys know that I buy hats. I buy hats of all kinds. This was a ladies' church hat or a derby hat, and we got 65 bucks for this. And I definitely want to talk about this because there's something you have to be aware of with hats. This hat was fairly large, and it's going to cost quite a bit to ship one of these things. The device that I'm going to give you now is when you list a hat, box this thing up, get the length, width, height, and the weight, and put that in on your eBay listing and charge calculated shipping. Calculated shipping means that the buyer is going to pay for the shipping based on the weight and the, weight, the sizes of the box. You don't want to be stuck holding the bag, paying you know an extra $30 because you didn't put calculated shipping. So... Keep an eye out for these type of hats. This is a woman's derby hat, like a you know, like a wedding hat. Um, it's vintage and, and they're they're pretty rare. You don't find them a whole lot, so they do pretty well. Moving on. All right, so next one. You hear me talk about Ariat all the time, guys. This Ariat shirt was a uh, fire resistant or FR. So Ariat by itself, jeans, shirts, anything Ariat is going to sell. It's like the staple of Western brands. It's not going anywhere. It's going to be here for a long time. But if you find an FR, that's what you're looking for, 
the shirt will generally bring about forty dollars. This one sold for a little bit less for like twenty six, and that was only because it was missing a button. So if this wouldn't have been missing a button, I would have got forty dollars for it easily. Area FR, and let me show you the. There is a there. That's the one you're looking for. If you can see the HRC two. If you can find that tag, you know it's FR. And of course, it'll say it on the tag here. All right, so the next one we have here was a Fig and Flowers Anthropology. That kind of fits right in with free people. You just got to be really careful on how much you're paying. Um, we pay, we got $23 for this. We probably paid seven. But, you know, sometimes when you're looking for inventory and you're trying to keep your store full. You know, I don't mind paying a little bit more. Uh, I'm paying $7 for a shirt and making 23, especially with anthropology brand like Fig and Flower, it's gonna sell. You're just not gonna get that much, uh, that, that much money for it. So like I said before on the free people, get it for a dollar at a garage sale, absolutely. But be careful otherwise. So let's talk about this master shirt next. We got $75 for this master shirt and this did come from Goodwill. I paid like $6.99 for it. And master shirts by themselves generally sell for a pretty good amount of money. But this one was a Berkman's place. It was a special master's polo. And I looked up comps on this thing and I saw them going for all the way up into 100, uh, all the way up past $100 and I was like blown away. So this is what I saw on that shirt that drew me, kind of drew me in, and I knew it was something different. And then I, I started researching this logo and saw that the prices were, were that high and I was blown away. So we ended up getting 75 for this. This is the kind of thing that keeps me going to Goodwill. Uh, you find a shirt like this, buy it for seven, sell it for 75. Man, you, you just can't beat that kind of profit margin. So that was an awesome find. The next brand here was Savannah Jane. And this was a woman's blouse. It was embroidered. We got $32 for this thing. And, you know, that's awesome. That's awesome profit margin. We probably paid $7 for this again. This was a Goodwill find. I know it was. And I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. It had a lot of detail work. And I think that's why this got more than it did than it, you know, just your average run of the mill piece. So Savannah Jane. Look for those. That's a good brand to pick up always. So here's another one of those items that um, just didn't do as well as we thought it was going to. I, no telling where we got this, but we only sold it for nine bucks. And it was probably one of those items that we were just trying to get rid of our inventory. So this was a prairie dress and they can absolutely do very well. I think that this one was just kind of run of the mill and that's why it didn't do very well. And we just wanted to get out of our inventory. So we probably ended up getting what we what we paid for it just to get it out of inventory. But yeah, so keep your eye open for prairie dresses, but they're a little bit more decorative. They'll do better. All right, next item, Tommy Bahama. So let's talk about this brand. I've talked about it before. This one sold for 25. We probably paid, I think this came from Goodwill. We probably paid six or seven bucks for this. So Tommy Bahama can do well if it's a men's shirt and it's linen, a men's shirt and it's silk, or ladies' dresses and cover-ups, ladies' cover-ups can do well in Tommy Bahama. You just gotta be careful, just look up comps, and really, I'll be honest with you, if it isn't one of those items, uh, be wary, you're not gonna get you know very good money for it, but when it comes to dresses, shirts, men's shirts, then definitely take a second chance, take, take a second look at them they can do pretty good. And I think there's going, going to be one that's going to be coming up that we sold uh, a men's shirt, and I'll show you that. So the next one here is this Lululemon uh, leggings, and they sold for 30. If you've been reselling for a while, you know Lululemon is a great seller. I used to pick up all Lululemons. If they were in any halfway decent condition, I would pick them up and sell them, but Kelly has kind of told me, you know, I need to start checking the crotch area for pilling and just for wear. And she's talking about right in here, if you lift the legs up and you look in this area, if it's worn out a lot, it's going to affect the price uh, pretty high. But 
with Lululemon, you're pretty much safe on just about every item. You're going to make your money back, and if it's a good item, you're going to you know double, triple what you paid for it. So this next one is an item that every reseller wants to find every time they go out. This is what we strive to find, but it's not going to always happen. So this Wrangler Brush Popper striped shirt sold for 119 bucks. And this was a Goodwill item. I went to Goodwill, and I'm telling you guys, there were resellers all over this area in the men's section going up and down these aisles. Every time I go into Goodwill, there's three or four. We talk all the time. These guys were all around this, and they left it. So I ended up finding it, and I picked it up, and I knew right away. I saw that design on the chest with the two buttons there, and then I turned it around here, and I saw the brush pop popper design on the back. And I knew it was going to be good. I didn't know how good, but as soon as I looked up comps, I saw they were going for over 100 bucks. So this is one of those items that, man, you just love to find every time you go into the store. You wish you could find it every time. But And it did have a stain on it. It did have a little bit of a stain right there. And I put that in the listing, and it still sold for over 100 bucks. So awesome find. Next one, this was an unusual item. This sold for 70 bucks, and this was a, a leather or suede dress and a top. It was very decorative. We found this in another Goodwill find. I think we paid 10 or $12 for this probably. We probably paid up a little bit more for it because it was a top and a bottom, but you can see the skirt there and then the top there. Very decorative, lots of fringe. Anytime you find anything leather like this, you know, take a second look. Leather always does well. Made in USA. Nice find there. So the next one I'm not going to click on is just a Seven Diamond shirt. It was a BKE brand, mall brand. It sold for 20 I think I, I wanted to do a test. I picked this up at Goodwill for 6 bucks and it sold for 20 um, I did find another one later on that had new with, it was new with tags and it sold for like 30 So your BKE brand um, can do well. It, it's got to be something unique, just like kind of like free people. You know, you, you, you got you to gotta be careful. You don't want to pay seven, eight dollars for a shirt. If you're finding these at a garage sale for a dollar, by all means, pick them up. The jeans, um, BKE jeans are a different story. If you can get those for eight dollars, nine dollars, like we do at, at our Goodwill, you can sell those for upwards at thirty dollars a piece. So, you know that, that's pretty good profit margin. I'll take that all day long. This next one, we had a Scully jacket. I've talked about Scully before. I think you guys know that brand. It's a Western brand. If you find the Scully brand, especially banded collar men's shirts, they do very well. Um, a lot of their men's shirts are very decorative with lots of embroidery. So if you can find those, then absolutely pick up Scully. It's going to do well. This jacket sold for 50 bucks. Not bad at all. I know we didn't pay more than $10 for it. And here's another good one. This is one we found on the church rummage sale. We got $45 for this LSU Tiger shirt. And it was single stitched. You can see here, single stitch there. And this is pretty unique. I don't think there was another one like this on eBay. This is probably eBay, <clears throat> an eBay one of one. This is the only one listed. It did take about a month or so to sell, though. So it sit for a little while. I guess the right person just came along and decided they had to have it. So I accidentally put this on the photos. This is how we, uh, when we <laughs> this shouldn't have been on the, the listing, but when we take photos of an item, we take a picture of the item by the box number it's going to go in so we can put that on the eBay listing on our SKU. But anyway, $45 for this shirt, not bad at all. Paid, I think, $1 or $2 for it. Excellent find. Always look for your single stitch uh, vintage tees. Here's another Ariat item. These pair of shoes sold for $28. And it's like I said before, Ariat pretty much, it's a home run. Every time you find it, it's going to sell. Some items can command a higher price than others. Uh, Kelly actually listed these and they sold within like a day. So we probably listed them a little bit too low. They're, uh, they're pretty detailed. A lot of embroidery on the front here. So anytime you find Ariat, pick it up. If it's cheap enough, it's going to sell for sure. So I definitely want to talk about this next item, wind pants. This pair sold for 22 bucks, 
And when it comes to wind pants, you know, Adidas and Nike do pretty well just about every time. Uh, vintage wind pants, uh, some Nike vintage can do a little bit better. You know, you can get anywhere usually from about $22 to $30 for a pair of wind pants. Um, the, unfortunately, it, when you're going to Goodwill, you're going to pay up for them six or seven bucks, sometimes eight bucks. So it's kind of a, it's kind of on the borderline for us. Sometimes I pick them up, sometimes I don't. But if I go to garage sales and I find them for a dollar, absolutely pick them up. They're going to sell. One thing you always want to look for on wind pants is ankle zip. If they're ankle zip like these were, they always do a little bit better. So we talked about BKE earlier, and this is a pair of uh, women's BKE, BKE buckle jeans. They sold for $26. Uh, we probably got these for $7.99 or $8.99. Goodwill's gone up on their prices on their jeans here in like the last couple of weeks. They started pricing like $11. It, it's crazy. But still, BKE jeans for us, they sell pretty damn good. So if you can get them for eight or nine bucks and sell them for 30, then why not do it? Um, we do find these at garage sales for a dollar uh, a lot of times. So keep your eye open for them. But BKE jeans, men's or women's, will sell. So I think I talked about this next item on our last video, but uh, Kelly found these Tony Lama boots and they were actually absolutely a home run. She got $204 for these. Uh, we were at Goodwill and she walked up to me and she pulled these out of the car and showed them to me. I was like, those are going to be a high dollar seller. She paid $20 for them and we ended up getting about 200. So very awesome. Fine. Very detailed. You can see the butterflies on these. I would probably venture to say these were like 80s, 1980s, maybe early 90s. Awesome find. You want to find this kind of stuff all the time. Tony Lama, there's the tag. You don't know it. On to the next one. So this Tommy Bahama shirt sold for 30 and this is a classic example of what I was talking about earlier. Tommy Bahama men's shirts in 100% linen, they will sell. This was a $6 pickup. It sold for $30. i will do that all day long. And it was just an average run-of-the-mill linen Tommy Bahama shirt. It was nothing special, but just, just the linen, 100% linen, sold this shirt. And if you can find silk, 100% silk Tommy Bahama, always pick it up. It's going to sell. So I skipped down a little bit, skipped over some items, and I just wanted to show you guys this. Here was some more of the appliance parts that sold, and we had one, two, three, four of these items that sold right in a row, and we got 90, 80, 60, and 80. And that storage locker has just been the gift that keeps giving uh, every time we list something. You know, it's selling. We haven't had anything that's set for a long time so far. We've been very lucky on it. Scroll down to find something. There's Eileen Fisher. I'll talk about Eileen Fisher. So this was just an Eileen Fisher dress, and I think we got 60 bucks for this. Let me go back and make sure. So the next one is this Eileen Fisher dress. And y'all have heard me talk about Eileen Fisher before. We got 65 for this. Eileen Fisher is a mall brand. And we kind of found out about this later on in our reselling. And man, it, it's, it's been a, a great brand for us. You know, every time we pick it up, we list it. It stays listed for maybe a week and it's gone. We got full asking price for this. Eileen Fisher does really well. Zoom in on it here. Very nice dress. So I'm going to talk about this next brand. And guys, this is definitely a bolo. If you find this brand, pick it up every time. I've only found this brand once. And when I looked up comps, I couldn't believe what these were going for. These sold for 80 and this is a used pair of jeans. I got these for, I think, $8.99 at Goodwill. So they're Imogene and Willie. And it, like I said, I've never heard of this brand before. And I just happened to pick it up. And when I picked it up, I looked up comps and I was blown away what they're selling for. There's the tag, Imogene and Willie. 
but they are in really good condition. And I think brand new, these jeans are like 200 bucks. All right, so I think I'm going to talk about this last one, and then we'll probably wrap it up. So this next one was a Prince tennis racket, and this thing sold for 60 bucks. Generally, at Goodwill, you're probably paying no more than $8 for a tennis racket, and we're next to a country club at the Goodwill that I bought this at. So very frequently, we get tennis rackets in almost new condition that uh, comes from this uh, wealthier neighborhood. They drop them off and donate them. They decide they don't want to play tennis and they end up at Goodwill. So this is one of those items you pay eight or nine bucks for and sell it for 60. But it was in excellent condition too. You can see here there's hardly any wear on the head of this thing. So we're going to wrap up this What Sold on eBay video here. And hopefully this has given you some ideas of what we sell and uh, what we list them for and what we paid and what, what uh, profit you can expect. And if you guys have any questions at all, please, by all means, leave a comment and I will answer you back on the comment section. If you want to know, if you want to see something else as far as content goes, if you want us to talk about something else, just let me know and I, I will touch on whatever subject you think you want to know about. But like always, guys, if you keep watching, we'll keep, make, keep making the videos and we'll see you soon. Do, 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 the busted button.